you go right out here in these woods and you can find birch trees that are completely dark, some that are almost completely white, a whole range of pinks and yellows and blues and violets, and uh, some of them grow straight, some of them grow crooked, and they have, uh, since I started painting them in 34 years ago, um, uh, kind of stood in for people in my work. They, in their, their uprightness and their strength and their vulnerability and the way what's happened to them in their lives shows in their skin. I like these little, you know, the little leaf buds. This is the only time of year that, that it ever looks like that. And so I'm always you know, looking and taking reference photos of them. I end up painting these wounds a lot. I always think, I think they're very, uh, very interesting, often really sensual where they've been scarred by rabbits chewing on them early in life and as they've grown, the scars, you know, move on up with them. It's just like people's skin. It's the same sort of thing, you know, this, this wound is 53 years old, but it's still there. This is a, this is a painting that I did. Uh, this is, there are a lot of birch trees that have kind of two main trunks growing out of one. And um, I almost never title paintings ahead of time. I, um, I always get done with a painting and, and I sit back and I think, now what was that about? This one, it's called Intertwined and it was painted just right after my wife died, um, completely unexpectedly. So, you know, this painting, I, I sat back and I looked and I thought, oh yeah, I guess that's, I guess that's about being intertwined. You know, I came to painting kind of late. I was a purely a math and science person growing up, and uh, I was a chemistry major when I started college, and um, and I was an abstract painter. When I when I fell in love with painting, I took an art class just to be with with my wife, and uh, fell under the spell of a wonderful undergraduate painting teacher who sort of convinced me by example that this is something a bright, ambitious young person might want to do. Um, and it was also kind of the first thing I'd ever done in my life that I was pretty sure I could never do. And uh, I think that was part of the attraction. And there's still a lot of days when I think, <laughs> think that. I mean, many, many days when I think that. I end up making paintings of skies in uh, near the equinoxes in March and September. I almost never, I mean, I never know until I go up in my studio what I'm gonna paint. I, it doesn't do me any good to decide what I'm gonna paint because it, it, it is surprisingly, especially for an obsessive person like me, kind of out of my control. Um, to me, this painting is absolutely bereft. It comes from the part of winter when you think spring will never come again. It shows me how a painter can make grief visual. And to me, it's, it's a hard painting, it's a difficult painting, and it's a very beautiful painting. He was and is principally an abstract painter. And if you look at any Kess painting, it remains an, an exploration of color and shape. Uh, they are, at the close-up level, there are always color field questions going on in Kess's paintings. Kess told me once that he thought he, he walked about six miles in the course of making the painting from being up close and really working on it as a, a color field question and then walking back to see what the bigger composition was, was going to be. I guess what he does is he sees the beauty in things, small things, details, that uh, the average person just kind of glosses over, doesn't realize uh, is there until it gets pointed out to him in a painting. And that's, that's what art is all about, isn't it? Yeah. And I think that Kess's work around the state has had a lot to do with 
Kess's desire to make a world where art could thrive. By the time I met Kess, he was retired. But uh, in a way, he's never stopped being a teacher. I know that I learn a lot from him. To the painter standing half a brush length away, this canvas becomes the world. Ridges of true red crashing into violet, devastating and creating continent, basin, range. The messy precision of making love in all its glory and beaver dam confusion, purposeful, passionate, a matter of survival, each chewed trunk living, then giving life beyond its own. Forty years with my my wife Missy, and then the next chapter. And each each year, I'll put another birch bark heart on for another year, beginning with with Dorley. And we keep talking about the last forty years and the next forty years. <laughs>